everyone, let's see how you can implement binary search in Python. In this video, you're going to learn the iterative implementation of binary search. Let's start by defining a function. We are going to zoom in right here so you can see this better. And the first thing that we're going to do is going to be writing the name of the function. In this case, it's going to be binary search. And within parentheses, we need two parameters, the two parameters that the binary search algorithm requires, the data, where we are going to search for that item or the sequence, you can name it as you like, and the item that is going to be searched by the algorithm. First, we need to start with the lower and the upper bounds of the interval where the algorithm is going to start the search. These initial bounds are going to be the lower bound is going to be index 0 in the sequence. And the upper bound, which we are going to call high, right here, the low and the high point of the interval, is going to be the length of the sequence minus 1. Why? Because the length of the sequence minus 1 is going to be the last index in the sequence. So those are our initial bounds. Then we are going to implement the algorithm using a while loop. And how can we do that? We say, while the lower bound is greater than or equal to the upper bound to the high point of the interval, well, that is true, and we stay within a valid range or a valid interval, then what are we going to do? We are going to find the middle element. The middle element is going to be the low index plus the high index divided by 2 using integer division. This operator, the floor division operator, is going to truncate the result. If this result of divided by 2 is, for example, 3.5, the result is going to be rounded down to 3. So we can use this as an index because we need an integer. After we do that, we have to check if that middle element is the element that we are looking for. So if the data at that middle index is equal to the item that we are looking for, then we just return that middle index. That is the output of the algorithm, the index of the element that we are looking for. This is the first case. In case the middle element, the element at the middle index, is the actual item that we are looking for, we return that index. But if that is not the case, then we have to decide where we need to continue the search. And for that, we need to use the fact that the sequence is sorted. How are we going to do that? Well, we are going to check if the middle element in the sequence is greater than the element that we are looking for. We can also write this as if the item is less than the middle element. If the item that we are looking for is less than the middle element, then that means that we should restrict our search to the lower half of the interval. And we do that by changing the upper bound of the interval to the middle index minus 1. Before, that value used to be the last index in the list. And now we are kind of shortening the interval by setting that value to the middle index minus 1. We are restricting our search to the lower half of the list or of the sequence that we are using for the algorithm. Then, if that is not the case, then the item is greater than the middle element. And in that case, we have to change the lower bound of the interval like this, middle plus one. Instead of changing the upper bound, now we're changing the lower bound to restrict our search to the upper half of the list. Great, so that completes the loop, the while loop that will perform the iterations that are necessary to find the item. But what happens when the item is not in the sequence? Well, we just need to return minus one. This algorithm will return minus one if the element is not found. And why do we return minus 1? Because it's not a valid index. So that it is not one of the possible values that will be returned if the element is found. We just return minus 1. If the element is found, then this return statement will stop the execution of the function immediately. So the index will be returned. Let's save the file and try this on a particular sequence. Let's say that we want to call binary search on a list, 5, 6, 15, 25, 45, 145. And what item do we want to find? Well, let's say that we want to find the number 45. Let's save the file and run the code to see what we get. First, we need to print that value. 
to display it in the console. We click right here and we can see this right here. We have the value 4. Why do we get that value? Because the item 45 is located at index 4 in the sequence. Index 0, index 1, index 2, 3, and 4. That is correct. That number is located at index 4 in the sequence. And that is the basic logic of binary search. I hope you like this video and feel free to watch it again if you need to review some of the details. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos linked right here. I'll see you there.